nothing like your old friend. Poor Mike, he's stuck right in the middle. <laughs> Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham Council for January 12, 2015, to order. We'll begin with a yeah. uh, an invocation led by Councillor Durley, followed by the singing of the national anthem led by Councillor Papp, and I would ask all who are able to rise. <clears throat> Dear God, who has given us grace to make our common goals unto thee, and who does promise that when two or more are gathered unto thy name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the petitions of thy servants, as may be expected of them. Grant all in his council chambers the knowledge of truth, justice, and honor in all considerations placed before them. Provide us in this chamber, O Lord, strong minds and discerning spirit as we deliberate over the business of our town that we move forward forever to ensure the town of Pelham continues to be a vibrant, caring, and creative community. May God bless all in this community and grant us in this chamber the wisdom, will, and generosity to determine or to guide the town of Pelham through challenges and successes that lie ahead. Amen. Amen. Oh, Canada, our home and nation, 
native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you very much, Councillor Gurley, Councillor Papp, and others. The first item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, that the agenda of the January 12, 2015 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Are there any changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest. Mm -hmm. That is any conflicts of interest and along with the general nature thereof. Do any members have any conflicts? None. None. I don't see any, so can that be so noted in the minutes, please? We'll now move to presentations. We have uh, two presentations this evening. The first is by Trevor Ferguson. It's great to have you back, Mr. Ferguson. And this is regarding the 2014 audit plan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. I personally can't think of a better way to start the year than go through an audit plan. So Absolutely. Thank you for having me here today. If I could have your undivided attention for more than a few hours, we should be just fine. <laughs> We've uh, made a very good effort, in my opinion, to really shrink and condense the plan this year. So it's about as small as we can possibly get it. Um, I, I will do, go through a couple of uh, key points on this page and the following page. Happy to take questions throughout uh, as you may have them. So a few, uh, few items I wanted to bring to your attention. Clearly, in terms of our audit scope, we're here to provide you with an opinion on the fairness of the presentation of the financial statements of the town for the year just ended, December 31st. Um, we were doing some work this week in terms of our interim reviews, testing of controls, things like that. We'll be coming back uh, in a few months' time to do all our substantive testing in year-end, and we'll come back to report to you on the results of our audit. In terms of materiality, we'll base that on expenses of the town for the year, for the year ended. Um, that's typical of any municipality, usually you base it on expenses. Um, what it was really of interest to the council is what our, our reporting threshold to you is, um, and that's 5% of our materiality. So if we find an error during our audit, whether or not it's corrected by management, if it's greater than 5% of our materiality, we're going to tell you about it. So that's a pretty low threshold. Uh, and again, that's in Canadian auditing standards. That's pretty standard stuff. So towards the bottom of the page and a little bit on the next page, it highlights a couple of our audit risks, two of which have been identified as significant risks. They're the same as last year, being revenue recognition and management override <coughs> controls. Um, this is by no means to raise any alarm bells. Um, Canadian auditing standards require that those two areas be, um, be documented and tested as significant risks, so that's why they are. That's the same for any audit of any entity. Um, so again, not to really raise any alarm bells. A few things I'll touch upon uh, on the audit risks. First being year-end cutoff. I think uh, you'll probably find that with virtually any, any audit. We're just trying to make sure that all the transactions that happen in the year are in fact recorded in the year in 2014 and they don't bleed into 2015 and for that matter anything that happened in 2015 doesn't bleed back into 2014 that's just testing of the cutoff tangible capital assets obviously the biggest number on the balance sheet um, so we'll be testing the additions and the amortization over the course of the year in terms of um, year-end accruals and other estimates um, estimates are always a big uh, area in which auditors look at because we can't uh, necessarily go to an invoice to test and get down to a hard number we need to test management's methods in which they use to come up with their uh, use to come up with their estimates and we have to determine whether or not we think those methods are reasonable and whether or not we agree with the number that's been placed in the financial statements at the end of the day the final piece on the page is around management override of controls um, that's the other significant risk um, a few things around management override of controls and this is some of the things that we do around <coughs> testing that um, and I have run into instances um, where this particular testing that we did in the past year, not in a municipality, but in another public sector organization, um, we actually did identify a fraud as part of a, 
part of the financial statement audit. Um, so some of the testing that we do, two, two things in particular I think you, you would find of interest. One is called a look back test. So what we do is we take a look at any significant estimates that were made in last year's financial statements. And the idea is to see if they're, what the outcome of those estimates were. What we're trying to do there is to see if there's any management bias to always overstate or always understate, things like that. And we keep, tra keep track of that over time. Um, usually that's more, um, more applicable in a for-profit audit, not, not necessarily a municipal audit, but nevertheless the test is required. Um, the other piece that we do is called journal entry testing. Um, now normally when we, when, we, when we perform a test in an audit, all our samples are random. So every single invoice has an identical chance of being selected. Entry testing. It's a very targeted sample where, uh, as, as uh, directed in the Canadian Auditing Standards, we are actually looking for fraud. So it's a targeted sample. Um, we're looking at, you know, I, I won't tell you everything that we look for, but some of the things we look for are, you know, journal entries of high dollar amounts, perhaps round numbers, perhaps posted by somebody who doesn't usually do things like that, maybe posted on a weekend or late at night or on a holiday, things like that. Those are just some of the things that we're looking for. Um, there are more than that, but like, if I gave away the, the whole house, I'd be, I'd be giving away too much. But some, those are the, some, some of the things that we look for. <coughs> Other things that we'll be doing is to have discussions with management on their views with respect to the risk of fraud. And we'll also be sending out an email to members of council with a couple, couple of questions that we're going to need to uh, respond back to. The last piece at the top of the next page is around revenue and deferred revenue. That's the other significant risk area. Um, again, nothing unusual there and uh, the same as prior years in terms of our level of testing. The reason why it's a significant risk and how that impacts things is we'll just be doing a little bit more detailed testing than we typically would for a normal risk. So I just touched upon uh, virtually everything that I need to speak to with respect to fraud risk and touched upon internal control as well. Um, with respect to the group audit comment there, the audit of the town's financial statements is considered a group audit. That's because there are a couple of entities that are consolidated into your financial statements, those being the airport and the power authority. So those, those two entities are consolidated in. So we are the group auditors, so to speak. Um, we're also the auditors of the airport, which makes things a little bit easier as far as the audit, um, audit process goes. Um, and for PWPI, we get their we get their, their audited financial statements and consolidate those in to provide you with the consolidated financials of the town. In terms of use of experts, we will be using our own internal uh, IT experts to, to test some of the general computer controls in place at the town so that we can rely on the numbers that come from the system. Um, the engagement letter has already been signed by management, so we're in good shape there. And if I was to go to the next page on uh, independence, we will be providing you with uh, an independence letter as part of our year-end reporting, and that'll just uh, verify that we are, in fact, independent and thus able to provide you with an independent auditor's report. The only other thing that I'll highlight is just uh, the appendix to this document being a communication requirements. There are 21 items over two pages here. Um, these are our official formal uh, communication requirements to Council um, as listed <coughs> in Canadian Auditing Standards. Um, some of them are a, a little bit out there, but they're there nonetheless. So, and what we've done in the, on the right-hand side of the page is to, to tell you the timing of our communication. So when we're going to tell you about these things, either as part of this document, um, uh, ongoing throughout the year, or as part of our audit results presentation. So for example, if we were to find a fraud during the course of the audit, we wouldn't wait until the year-end results presentation to tell you about it. We'd bring it to your attention right away. Um, so really, that's it. That's our present, uh, the audit plan at an extremely high level. We tried to condense them as much as possible, despite the level of interest I know everybody has. <laughs> so um, with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Ferguson, for your presentation. Do members of council have any questions for our auditor? Councillor Papp? Thank you, Mr. Richardson, and I'm very happy you kept it under five minutes. No. <laughs> Finance is my strong point. That's why I have a heart attack every time my bank statement comes. So, um, The issue that you raised about the revenues is when you're doing the test, are you looking at how accurately we are projecting or we're, how realistic we are about revenue projections for certain all areas in the municipality? Is that the idea is to sure what actually happens as to what was said or predicted? projections. Um, okay. but what we do look at it, we're looking at the actual numbers. The actual um, numbers themselves. But what we're looking at is to see whether or not the number that's presented is too high or too low, overstated gotcha. or understatement. So not comparing against budget. Okay. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Others? Just a, a quick question about uh, the group audit. You didn't mention the library. You undertake the audit for the library as well. But are they, they're also 
uh, considered separate and consolidated in. Is that not the case? They're very okay. small, but you're right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Anything else from members of Council? Oh, so that's, an uh, that's an excellent question, Mr. Mayor. So the, does that form part of our overall audit? So any, even though they're an independent board, they receive the report first, or is that consolidated with ours? It is consolidated with our statement. It's part of our municipal corporations audit. I think it used to be separate. Did it I thought it was like separate because I mean the first time I served here it used to be separate. Okay, thank you. Now Sorry. it's simply a page, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate your presentation. I do have a motion. It's been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. The 2014 audit plan presented by Deloitte, Mr. Trevor Ferguson, be received for information. All those in favor? Any opposed, that motion is carried. Thank you very much. And I should have mentioned that the auditors have already been hard at work. They've been in the building, and uh, I know the deputy uh, treasurer has been working uh, quite extensively with them. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks again. Now we're moving to our next presentation, and uh, this is reducing our carbon footprint, and it's one of our interdepartmental teams. Uh, very pleased that some of our staff are here. Uh, Nick Alemo, Kim Holland. Saskia Holditch and Bob Goodfield. Thank you very much for joining us. Especially Bob, who's been up since 1 a.m., I think, monitoring the, uh, the roads uh, to make sure that they're safe for vehicles. So thank you, Bob, for being here. And others. Hang on. Is it? that we've heard great things about this, but we'll put pressure on them. <laughs> well, everyone, first of all, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to present today. Our team members are myself, Bob, Kim, Nick, Saskia, and Dale Miner helped out a lot. He's retired now, and Darren Pat also. Our topic is reducing the carbon footprint in the town of Pelham. So as you all know, our 2014 strategic plan states goal number five is to enhance the quality of life in our town with the objective of promoting environmental responsibility through stated initiatives that include utilizing green facilities and equipment, leverage water bottle filling stations, policy development, and maintenance and replacements of trees. And I should acknowledge the fact that these priorities will be carried in the 2015 strategic plan, so we are excited to hear about that. So with our strategic plan in mind, we've identified a problem also known as our fuzzy situation. And that is, how might we reduce the carbon footprint caused by town events, products, services, or persons? So it was then, dating back to April of this year, we decided to start brainstorming ideas on how uh, we can help address this issue. Um, some of the things we came up with, starting at the top of the screen there, new construction lead standards, alternative energy sources, LED street lighting, improved insulation, improved staff practices, improved operational practices, programmable thermostats, hybrid vehicles, motion sensors, and the list went on and on and on, accumulating to approximately 37 potential opportunities that the town could capitalize on. So it was at this point we decided that a uh, formal how might we process was in order so that we could drill down on a seemingly overwhelming topic. So that's uh, when we turned to Jordan uh, for help with that, and she helped us through a fact-finding session. And uh, <clears throat> one of the first things that came up is recycling. Uh, this, this came up in our uh, discussions over and over. The recycling in the town could be improved upon at our facilities, at our events. Uh, the waste we produce could be um, reduced and recycled a lot better. Um, we need policies, guidelines, procedures. We need these thoughts put on paper um, to, to guide us, to tell us where to go with this, how far do we carry it, how are we going to get there. It needs to be um, put down a, a map, so to speak. Um, a very important need that we uh, determined is education. How do we educate people? How do we convince them how important recycling is? How do we convince people to take their... Um, use paper and throw it in the recycling bin that's two steps away and not in the waste basket. How do we um, convince them to buy a reusable coffee cup instead of getting the throwaway cup every time? So we need to educate town staff, um, people that visit town events, residents in the town. There's a lot of education 
that needs to be done. Uh, one of the uh, things, topics that came up a lot was cost, and um, we, we determined this is a killer phrase, and it might not even be an issue with many of the ideas that we had. <coughs> So um, then we converged all these needs and these facts into one. We need to find a way to um, make the town more environmentally friendly, the town and the events, and more energy uh, conscious. Um, <coughs> did I skip one? Mm -hmm. I went a little bit too far. There we go. The next step we did was the problem. So after the fact finding, which we just did, we uh, got into problem definition. And uh, one of the problems was how do we motivate people? How do we uh, get them uh, to take those extra measures to, to be more environmentally conscious? Um, how do we create these policies, put them on paper? And this is something that has to be at the, the upper management level. This is not something that uh, at, at um, medium man management or, or uh, the staff can do, um, upper management has to decide how much um, the town wants to invest in this and how much they want, how far they want to take this. Um, how do we justify investments? Uh, so is the cost worth it? Uh, some of it is monetary and um, some of it is not. Sometimes you can get rebates on programs so you get money back for an investment you make to be more environmentally friendly. Um, sometimes changing a light bulb to LED gets you um, use less light bulbs in the, more, in the long run, you use less energy, so you can see the cost benefit at the end of it. Um, some investments now might not um, come out in money. You might um, be able to improve the air quality or reduce noise pollution. It might take a monetary investment. But the quality of life for the residents of t in the town will improve, so that's another um, investment you get back. How do we measure our success? How do we know whether the goals we set ourselves are reached? Um, what are the goals and, and how do we measure them? And again, that could be monetary, like uh, we want to save so much in electricity bills, we want to turn down the AC, uh, we want to uh, turn down the heat, uh, replace all the uh, lights with LED bulbs. But it might also be um, that we want to reduce the uh, pile of waste we used to have every week from so much to so much. So how do we measure that? How do we determine whether our goals are met or whether we need to adjust our plans? And um, another uh, interesting topic that came up as we're discussing all of this is to implement um, environmentally friendly um, aspects into new planning developments, such as uh, the East Hotel that's coming up. It's a lot cheaper to do it on paper than to retrofit it afterwards. And um, a lot of things that came up are uh, low maintenance landscaping, um, street lights that use um, LED uh, light bulbs. Uh, one of my favorites is in Holland, they now have solar powered uh, lit up bike paths. So there you go. <laughs> so these are all the ideas that uh, we were tossing around. Mm. I'll turn it over to Kim now. Okay, so the last step in our problem definition was the challenge mapping, which everyone's familiar with. It's, uh, it's a complex process, but it comes out with some really good um, results. So we identified three things, which I'll go over with you. And they are, how might we designate a sustainability leader and team? How might we identify a corporate greenhouse gas emission goal and vision? And how might we identify quantitative and qualitative benefits of reducing our carbon footprint and measure our success? So from there, we went into idea finding and came up with, uh, after several, several on paper, we did nail it down to three. So this is what we came up with. How might we have mayor and council endorse a corporate greenhouse gas emission vision? How might we determine our current carbon footprint? And how might we designate an energy leader and green team to reduce our carbon footprint and create a culture of sustainability? That was just something we kind of came up with as a as a corporation and as a town, maybe we could start to create a, a culture of sustainability. So the next step <coughs> was, of course, our action plan. Taking those three items, we generated this action plan. And the three items I just mentioned are down the, the side under the what, of course, and then the how. So I'll just quickly go through those. So the first thing was to designate an energy leader and a green team. So how are we going to do that? First, we did this presentation <coughs> to senior management team, of course, which um, we did that a little while back. 
And then we said we would recommend a potential leader and how to select a green team, which our CAO very quickly asked us, who is that person going to be? <laughs> so uh, what we did actually was not name a name, but more so we felt it was very important to, that it be somebody at a director level or above. Um, we s compared it sort of to health and safety, I guess. Health and safety mm -hmm. being driven from the very top level and down into the corporation. And we feel this is, is very, very important as well and needs to be sort of led from that high level. So that was our recommendation. And then the second item is determine our current carbon footprint. So using existing greenhouse gas emission data, which we actually do have. So the Ministry of Energy has, um, there was a <coughs> mandate a couple of years ago, July the 1st of 2013, we had to start submitting our annual energy data that, of consumption in our facilities. So we've got two years of data already that have been um, submitted to the Ministry of Energy and it is part of the broader public sector submissions. So we have that information, we have benchmark information, so we already know um, what our greenhouse gas emission data is for our facility. So we just need to expand on that a little bit. Then we said we'd meet with staff, or the green team, we should say, once it's established, we'd meet with staff to determine things like a waste or recycling audit. That's a process that's very worthwhile, we felt. A waste audit is, uh, can be done after an event or it can be done on a simple you know, weekly pickup day where you literally do go through the trash and determine what is being diverted where. And then you, you know, that's an education piece. The third and final one was uh, how do we, how might we have mayor and council endorse the greenhouse gas emission vision? Again, this is the green team that would hopefully be established. They would take that data and present that, maybe assist or certainly endorse whatever council decided in terms of creating a vision and achievable goals. That's that was very important to us, something very measurable. And then, of course, show um, council some of the best practices that we did come across during this process. So, in conclusion. We recommend that the Talon Palm create a green team. This will reduce our carbon footprint and it aligns with our strategic vision with regards to our long-term environmental sustainability mandate. That concludes our presentation. Any questions? Thank you very much for your presentation. It's exceptional. We greatly appreciate it. Do any members of council have any questions for our presenters? So, Councilor Pat? Not a question, so much a comment, yeah. on, if I can. Please. Um, well, first of all, it, it pleased me to no end to see cross-departmental teams mm -hmm. working on issues. Mm -hmm. As a, a former staff member, I worked <clears> with <throat> a very progressive, creative, just like we have here, CAO, who used to do this. We tackled problems, taking people from different aspects of different experiences. Um, one of the things that I've come out of this is I'm, I know strategically we've said we want to increase quality of life, and I know, Mr. Mayor, we've talked about this. I think. Corporately, policy-wise, as governors of the corporation, we need to adopt a policy that states we embrace <coughs> the development of a carbon footprint within the town of Pelham. And I say that because one of the key um, principles that are applied, some of you may or may not know, you probably heard about the Helsinki principles. Mm -hmm. The Helsinki principles basically say that everything that is done in that city is done in alignment with the environment. There isn't anything there that whether they build, redu operate, it's all done on those bases, and I think that's we have a golden opportunity here and now. And you mentioned a few things about, uh, you know, purchasing hybrid cars. We're about to embark on some major construction, reconstruction, all of those from a policy standpoint, in establishing the team through you, Mr. Mayor, and the, and the particularly the CEO and staff, say that as people come to do business with us, come to live, they know that we will ensure that we'll be reducing that. So we basically need to, in, in fact, I guess I don't know if we, it's necessary, I'll leave that up to the CEO of staff to state that we as council endorse that whole, that whole concept and make it part of our mandate that whether it's a small builder, a large one, and I'm, I'm thinking particularly of a building, uh, uh, forgive me, Mr. Mayor, in another town where they built an auto, they built a, a, a a sales place for uh, for cars. Mm -hmm. This thing, and you know the one I'm talking about, Mr. Mayor. They won a major awards. This this thing is. I've talked to the owner. He saved hundreds of thousands of dollars on this. Besides being the state of the art design, the building has saved. So that's something that we need to be able to state unequivocally. And that's only what I was trying to. Uh, oh, hard for me to talk. <laughs> no broken ribs. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I'm I'm just first of all congratulations. I love this kind of stuff, and more importantly, 
that we, I think what you're suggesting to us, that we endorse that type of policy from a, a council standpoint. <coughs> How you execute it is up to you. That's for you to make that determination. But it also, as we work through all these projects, whether it's purchase of vehicles, reconstruction, re recycling, those are all part and parcel of that. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor, it's part of our overall em embracement of that. And thank you for the time. Okay. For, and uh, congratulations. I love it. Thank you very much, Councillor Pat. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, great work, great group. Uh, just, it, it's exciting to see how this is going to go. Uh, the one question that I might have, and, and this is uh, your, the first designated energy team, in, uh, energy leader and green team, uh, this is a work in progress and you folks are going to be meeting further. What do you perceive this green team to look like? <coughs> well, I, I think when we talked about it, um, and we haven't, just briefly, because it's not obviously us necessarily, it's, it's really up to the leader, whoever that leader is. but. We did feel it was important that it was a cross-functional team, and right. similar to what we have here in front of you. So, mm -hmm. you know, different representatives, not to mention, you know, depending on where we're going, if we're going out to the community and we're talking about events and that kind of thing, then we may want some community members as well. I, I don't know. It's just, it's really up to the leader, whoever that person is, to, and then, you know, it'll be a voluntary thing, and I don't think we'd have any problems finding volunteers for this type of committee or mm -hmm. green team, shall we say. Look, look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Durley. Anyone else with questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you. Again, uh, great presentation, excellent work. Uh, the green team that you're putting forward, do you, do you envision them providing, because all, all of this will have budgetary implications. That's right. Uh, so do you foresee the green team establishing the baselines for where we are today and a set of metrics that would allow us to measure right. Uh, cost versus impact, that sort of thing. I mean, these are things that are important to weigh when we're putting together a budget. I think ultimately uh, the goal is to work in you know some some financial models into the whole thing so that we could come up like with a net present value, for example, for implementing LED street lighting, because of course initial um, investments are going to be very high, but over the long term, you know, looking to save costs, right? So it's just putting that on paper and uh, being able to illustrate that to senior management and, of course, council. I think this is also where we sort of thought in the world and the what do we do is to try and, I mean, pick and choose projects to present, and it's not possible because we need to hear from mm -hmm. you or from the town, uh, how far do you want to take this? Mm -hmm. Do you want to mm -hmm. make this investment into streetlights um, with this return on right. it, or, or is it not worth it to you? So we need to hear it from, from us. higher up basically to, to put a baseline on it and then projects can trickle out from there. Councillor? Uh, as a follow-up, Mr. Mayor, uh, so you've, I think you've answered my second question is the timelines. Do you envision that we as council, uh, in harmony with senior staff, develop policy at the inception of this prior to the creation of the green team or would the green team be established and come back to us after some research with what are some of the gold standards out there as <clears> far as <throat> policy goes and that type of thing and rather than us trying to operate in a vacuum how, how do you see that playing out who wants to answer I, that maybe i can comment on that Holland? i think there's um there's a few aspects there's so much and i like i say this all the time low-hanging fruit i mean there's so much opportunity i think you could spend the first year just educating you know and that's the community and the staff because there's there's so much that we can be doing right now um, however, we're not going to do that, I'm sure. So the other thing that we did work together on, actually the CAO and myself, was the um, energy management plan. So we do have a five-year energy management plan that we're, we've basically completed in theory, which has some measurable. So yes, we'd like to say, perhaps council will say, we'd like to see a 10% energy savings over the course of the first three years. The next three years, we want to see another 10 you know, we can have those type of things which I think are completely achievable. Mm -hmm. And then there's those other sort of qualitative <coughs> things that we need to identify. I think council, it should start there for sure. And then the, the nuts and bolts of it will be de further defined by that leader in the green team, I, I, in my personal opinion. Anything for the council? No? Anyone else? Yeah. Councillor King? If I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I think Saskia actually had mentioned that there are <coughs> usually um, grants available to support some of these initiatives. Sort of in keeping with that, I'm wondering whether the Ministry of Energy um, actually has a blueprint um, to support the initiative that you've begun, and if it's something that you can download and work from. We did a lot of <coughs> research just Googling on the computer, and I did come yeah. up with a couple of manuals that were this thick as to how much percentage has to be green and native plantings, and that was just looking okay. into the tiny aspect of how to improve our landscaping. Um, with new construction, there is lead buildings. Um, right. Those are standards that yeah. you can say your buildings have to meet. So there's so many aspects, and so it's so big, is this project. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, where do you stop? <laughs> Where do you start and where do you start? <laughs> yes. And for example, with Fire Station 3, we um, applied for a high performance new construction incentive and did receive money back for that for you know having some, some items that were air you know, air conditioner was so many sear and so on. So, you know, there's there's those day to day things that we do as a town as well. But um, you know, when it comes to planning new subdivisions and working with developers that we involve Terrence, if it come you know, for LED street lighting, it's actually Alan and myself have been working on, on the, the upcoming project. So there's lots of, um, again, cross-functional. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Anyone else? Council? I, I want to um, echo some of the comments from, uh, from council colleagues. First, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for taking this on and uh, giving us a, a way forward, a, a suggestion forward. When I reflect on it, council, um, I think it's similar to some of the successes we've had. So a few years ago, uh, at the prompting of a volunteer committee in that case, um, we signed the walking charter mm -hmm. and um, really put that into place and, and embodied that. So not only in construction, which folks might think about in terms of sidewalks and trails, but also in events for instance, um, encouraging people to, to walk and really looking at it in a holistic way. What I'm hearing from the presentation and each of you around the table, Council, is that you're interested in that more, and, and staff are interested in that more broad approach, that it's not just recycling, although that's important, it's not just LED lights, although that's important, and some of the low-hanging fruit, but that there are other ways of doing business um, and and that they can help us not only save money but also reduce our carbon footprint so when I think of things like what Ms. Holditch uh, talked about along cycling paths lights along solar lights <coughs> along cycling paths well you know that could go into development agreements that Mr. Glover uh, will be overseeing for instance and and other other initiatives so I, I guess um, what I'm saying is that to start with that policy and that overarching theme and to carry on the enthusiasm that we've seen from staff and council, I think will get us a long way down this, uh, down this path to reduce our, our carbon footprint and increase uh, um, you know, our ideas of the environment and making it important. So, Mr. CAO, I'm going to turn to you and ask, in, in terms of the recommendation that's before us, is to approve the uh, the recommendations contained within the report. I would imagine the first step on that is to come forward with a draft policy or a draft plan, um, and you'll put your mind to su suggestions to council in terms of that point person. I guess is that what the committee is suggesting uh, to lead this uh, green team. Am I correct in that? Can you elaborate further? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. The um, the group did present to SMT uh, and said they wanted a high a high up person, and their title had to start with the letter C E C A O. So I think <laughs> I'm pretty much on board with that. Okay. Um, the second step is to uh, continue the work of the group because it is something that's happened, uh, something that's been reiterated in the 2015 Strategic Plan mm -hmm. by Council. So. The way I was looking at it was staff has met already uh, to develop initiatives around that particular goal of council. Um, there will have to be some formality in order to start the implementation part of it, 
which will include policy development um, uh, and again getting that mandate from council to proceed and to what ex you know sort of what are the governance issues around environmental uh, management and then mm -hmm. um, like it was noted set up the green team to function similar to the workplace health and safety committee so that mm -hmm. Um, opportunities and, and risks are identified and you know plans are, are starting to be implemented and again that would be an interdepartment, interdepartmental team that we would set up uh, fairly quickly okay thank you so if we approve the recommendation that's be um, going to be moved shortly which is to approve the, the recommendations in the report what's the what's the timing I think Councillor uh, Papp asked about the timing in terms of that policy piece um, the the policy piece, Mr. Mayor, would more than likely be 60 days or so, right. I would imagine. Okay. Uh, I don't suspect it's going to take too long. Uh, we are in the process of populating the interdepartmental teams. Uh, we, again, we've started that work with staff and um, we'll be rolling those out. So I think once that work has been done, we'll have a team put together and we'll be able to come forward with something. Okay. And then the final thing is that, as was suggested by a member of council, that the idea of, and, and and the committee, the idea of getting involvement from the community. Uh, so council, this is something that we'll probably want to consider when we look at the strategic plan and the, and the committees that we have. I mentioned the, um, I was going to say the accessible, what's it called? The, uh, the name escapes me now. Active, Active Transportation, Transportation Committee. Um, so we may want to somehow ensure that we include members of the public whether they go to events and they talk about those or or in the initiative so I would ask uh, council to keep this in mind when we talk about that uh, hopefully next week okay thank you very much for your presentation for your enthusiasm and uh, as as you presented you could see uh, knowing each of you as, as we do uh, you know your your departments your areas come through on that so and your personalities so thank you very much for your involvement in this Thank you. It has been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Durley, that the presentation from the interdepartmental team regarding reducing our carbon footprint, footprint be received and that the recommendations contained therein be approved. Anything further? There being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thanks again. We appreciate your work. And thanks for, uh, for coming in, especially on with short sleep there, Bob. Thank you. Next on the agenda is supposed to be the report of Regional Councillor Beatty. He is uh, not here this evening. He's probably holding off until our next meeting. Um, essentially, we've had, as I mentioned at our last meeting, uh, orientation and uh, committee meetings, and uh, this week we'll have Regional Council, so no doubt he'll report on that at our next meeting. Next on the agenda is the adoption of minutes of council. It's been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Durley. The following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Minutes of our special meeting of council on December 15th and of the special meeting on December 17th, 2014. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is consent agenda items to be considered in block. Are there any items that members of council would like to lift for separate consideration? There being none, it has been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, that the following consent agenda items be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. One, action correspondence of a routine nature from A. Holmes and T. Rigg regarding the Carriage Hill drainage budget request that the 2015 budget request letter submitted by those authors regarding the installation of storm sewers at Hurricane Road and Pelham Street be received and refer referred for inclusion in the 2015 budget for Council's consideration at a future date. Mm -hmm. Next, we have information correspondence items regarding the first, regarding Ontario's volunteer recognition programs for 2014 and a call for nominations. Second, City of Port Colborne resolution regarding property tax relief for seniors. Third, Town of Fort Erie resolution regarding GO tra um, Rail services. Fourth, Niagara Central Airport regarding the 2015 operating budget. And fifth, a letter from Niagara Peninsula Energy regarding an LED street lighting program. Third, we have minutes of uh, committee, and that is the Christmas in Pelham Committee meeting of November 4th, 2014.
comments or questions regarding any of those items? Councillor Kersey and then Pap. Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a couple of, uh, of items I'd like to speak to. The first one was uh, Niagara Airport budget. Um, I was just wondering, I, by my calculations, we pay from the town of Pelham about 10%, 10.7%, 11% of the overall budget. Uh, how is that in comparison to what we paid last year? Are we in the same ballpark? Like they're projecting $14,900 out of our kitty. Basically the same? Yeah, Madam Treasurer, it is the same? It's the same. Yeah, I did note with interest, Councillor, that the 2014 either budget or near actuals weren't listed on the budget for 15, so it's yeah. hard to compare. So thanks yeah. for the question. Uh, and uh, on a follow-up, uh, Mr. Mayor, on the same issue, I was wondering if the Treasurer could explain whether the debt that the airport is considering undertaking <coughs> would have an impact on our debt ceiling uh, as established by the province. Does the province look through our corporation to the library or to the um, Airport and see their debt as our debt, Madam Treasurer. For you, Mr. Mayor, um, that all depends on who uh, who takes out the debt. Um, the, the request of the airport commission was that we, as a municipality, would take on the debt ourselves and and pay it down. So, if they're taking out, we would have to go through the Niagara region. Yes, it would impact our debt. So, um, the, our debt repayment limit. If they take on the debt themselves and then we make a, an agreement with them that we are going to uh, pay it, it would not impact on our debt repayment limit. So just for, for clarity, uh, Madam Treasurer, if, if we are paying, part of the money we give to the, um, to the airport is for debt service, the ministry would not see that as, as having an impact on our debt? No, it would okay, not. Would be, I, if, I think. Yeah. If, if they own the debt and we service it, it would not. But if we took out the debt on their behalf, yeah. it would. And, and the purpose of this correspondence is also because at the pre budget presentation, it was presented a little bit differently than, than asking us to free up the tax revenue that uh, we are currently paying them and use it towards uh, debt. So I'm just trying to get some clarification on, on when we do the budget discussion later on which portion um, to consider for our, for our budget purposes. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councillor Ribiak wants to add as the representative from Council. Is that all right, Councillor? Councillor Ribiak. So just as a matter of information, uh, uh, the Commission will be meeting with all four uh, mayors and CAOs within the near future. We're working on putting a meeting like that together to explore various ways of covering uh, the financial needs that we talked about, uh, hopefully without necessarily getting into debt, finding other ways of doing it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kersey, anything further? Nothing further on, on that point. item. I'm going to ask if other councillors have any questions <coughs> regarding the airport commission budget. Uh, is it possible to get the 2014 um, budget as well, just when this, when we consider it, just so that we uh, compare the, I'm sorry, year to the year? The actual request from the airport? We, we received the budget last year. Mm -hmm. Can we compare what this year's is? How much is it up? All, all that. The 2014 is not here. So if we can, when we consider it a budget, have the 2014 to be helpful. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kersey, you indicated you had other items. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, uh, again, for a point of clarity, I see that we have an opportunity with LED street lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to ensure that we were at least looking into it and seeing what the financial implications of that would be. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mantle? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, we are <coughs> examining that. There's a we have um, there's a couple of us in engineering examining it right now to look at where the cost advantages are. Um, it looks like uh, there's definite cost savings in energy, but the biggest savings will be in the um, maintenance costs because it'll be a brand new system. So we're currently investigating to put a business plan forward and bring it to council. Thank you. Others uh, to this item? Very exciting that NPAI has uh, some dollars that they can. Uh, dispense with immediately, it says, in order to further this project. So we're very pleased uh, about that, and that's coming from the provincial government. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Papp. Oh, very quickly, Mr. Mayor, through you. Uh, item 11.5.1, through you to the Director of Recreation. Do we have any nominees for Youth Volunteer Service Award? Or I know the deadline's pretty tight. Yes. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we are reviewing our past nominees. Uh, what the um, 
the one award is for years of service and continuous right. use of years of service. So we have to make sure that uh, we haven't already given it to them, basically. Right. So we're reviewing the past files, and we will. Um, but if anyone has any suggestions, we'd appreciate them. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Yeah, I think I do. I think it's just to continue our efforts to build upon our volunteer base because yeah. people see that we're recognizing the, uh, the contributions of local citizens, whether it's young or old. It just, as you know, enhances and encourages them to come to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I have a couple of suggestions. I'll send them for a nomination for Excellent. consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? <coughs> Any other items? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. <coughs> and now we move to bylaws. Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved by Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Kersey, that the Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due consideration to the following bylaw, do now read a first, second, third time and do pass the same of the Mayor and Clerk B and are hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. One, being a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and Clerk to enter an agreement with the Harrington Group Limited for consulting services as per the proposal to coordinate accessibility for Ontarians with Disability Act compliance for the period of February 1st, 2015 to January 31st, 2016. And the second bylaw being a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and Clerk to enter into an encroachment <coughs> agreement with Rocket Lumber for a part of the road allowance between lots 167 and 168, uh, former geographic township of Thorold, parts of Block 8, registered plan 717 being parts 2, 3, and 4 on plan 59R15262. Discussion to any of those items? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and if I'm out of order, please tell me. I, I just wanted to talk in general terms about encroachment agreements, and some things have been brought to my attention regarding encroachment within the town and how we deal with it. And I wondered um, if this rocket lumber issue is a start on trying to clean up encroachments that have been existing for a long period of time, or whether they're just going to be dealt with on an ad hoc basis. Um, I'm speaking yep. specifically about downtown, for example. Yeah, there are encroachments uh, of lights, of cornices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Are the, is, is our plan, is staff's plan to go around and clean these all up? Or is it basically only going to be dealt with as far as new development, et cetera? Mr. Glover? Mr. Chair, uh, we've, we, I, I too have received uh, some comments um, on, on the light fixtures uh, uh, and encroaches cornices and that that are actually going to encroach onto our road now. It's, and these are things that, that we would like to see as part of our downtown master plan, uh, as part of the character of our area, to give us the um, uh, coming into the streetscape so it's a, a pedestrian level. Um, there have been some complications, I guess, with the current process. It's very um, structured. And, and uh, the time involved to get an actual uh, encroachment is, is sometimes difficult. Uh, as part of our review of the downtown master plan, uh, we're going to be looking at, at the encroachment agreement and see if there's any areas that we can improve upon it uh, to help the development community as well as maintain the protection of the town at the same time. Um, so uh, I don't have a timing in, in mind yet. Uh, it will happen, uh, I hope, to, uh, this spring or summer. We're bringing some to the council for direction. But we hope to get some kind of uh, team together, uh, a senior management level, and discuss opportunities that we have here and what we can do to improve the situation. Thank you, Mr. Glover. Councilor? No, I think that's great. Okay. Excellent. Any others? Thank you. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. We do have a couple of in-camera items, but as we uh, normally uh, do, we will... We do have a motion to recess that and uh, convene at a later time. So it's been moved by Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Kersey. The Council recess the in-camera portion <coughs> of the meeting and reconvene immediately following the committee meeting scheduled for this evening. We're ready for the calling of the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. We'll now take a brief recess. Thank you. Hold order. Break over. Do we, do we need a, do we need a, you want to keep rolling? No, okay. Keep going. Okay. Thank you. Keep going. So now council will go to the, um,
convening of the Committee of the Whole from December 8th. Policy and priorities. Oh, policy and priorities. Mm 